Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Chat Show. This 30-minute webinar is live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And your comments and questions via these platforms are most welcome. Please keep them kind and respectful. Following this event, you are welcome to join us via the Blue Jeans online conferencing app for a one-hour NESA-accredited workshop with our guest presenter. Now, here's your host, Dr. Tim Kitchen. Well, thank you so much, Rob, and welcome to the Inject Creativity live chat show being recorded via Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the Asia-Pacific Adobe in Education Facebook group. We are recording this live on Wednesday, the 23rd of September, 2020. And I'm your host, Tim Kitchen, Adobe's Senior Education Specialist for the Asia Pacific region. This is our final episode prior to the APAC Adobe Education Summit, which is next week. Hopefully, all of you have already registered for that event. More information about the summit will be coming very soon. Before I introduce my amazing co-host, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. Let's introduce our amazing co-host, Erin Raithke from TAFE Queensland. Hi, Erin. How are you? Hey, Tim. I am well. How are you doing? I was going really well right up until when this show went straight to air because my mouse decided to stop working. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lucky we've got a trackpad and my mouse is still not working, but that's okay. Oh. But I'm also rather excited because guess which football team is now in the AFL finals? Could it be the Saints? Yes, it could. Ah, oh, what a relief to actually be there. Look, anything from now is a bonus as far as I'm concerned. But, hey, go Saints. Yep, <laughs> and um, also I know that up in Queensland they're trying, they're trialling a couple of stages to being able to increase the capacity for those games as well. Um, so a few more people will get to go. So that's pretty nice. They're doing it cautiously, but they're still working on it. So... <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's going to be a wonderful event, the final series. The other thing that was a highlight for me this week was actually doing an event this morning in Darwin. No, I wasn't there in Darwin. As you can see, I'm on the screen and all the Darwinians are there watching me with my mask. And we had about, I think there's about 100, 150 students there at the Hilton Hotel in Darwin for this special event called a Big Day In. And it's the first time we've run a Big Day In event in the Northern Territory. We run them in virtually every other city around Australia with the Australian Computer Society Foundation. And it was a pleasure to be the keynote speaker and the opening keynote speaker at the Darwin event this morning. And around about 600 students from all over the Northern Territory were beaming in to watch it. And it was being hosted out of Sydney. I was in Melbourne. They were all over Northern Territory and it went faultlessly. No mouse issues there. <laughs> See, that's amazing, especially since aren't a lot of the schools in the Northern, in the Northern Territory, I should say, uh, on satellite internet as well, like they... Yeah, and it seemed to work really well, which was great. And what I loved doing was I highlighted some of the videos that we talked about in our last week's show for that Territory Day video competition. And I couldn't see their faces, but I could sense their smiles as they were being highlighted and appreciated, which was terrific. It was nice to be able to share that with them. Yeah, I've been sharing those videos too. I think they're just spectacular. Erin, what can we look forward to during this week's episode? Well, I'm looking forward to introducing everyone to our special guest for this evening, Peter Hutton from the Future Schools Alliance and Kesh Chinia from the Southport School on the Gold Coast. We'll be finding and meeting more, finding out a bit more about those people, Peter and Kesh, very soon, helping us moderate and doing a lot of the techie things behind the scenes is my wonderful colleague, the legendary Adobe Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Tim. Hi, Erin. Hi, everyone. I'll be moderating the chat tonight, so please ask questions, post comments. Let's make this chat show really interactive. Thanks, Jerry. It's good. Nice to see some dinner being prepared there in the background. 
No, um, we are also getting the chat feed from those of you on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, but not always from Twitter. So if you're joining us from Twitter and you'd like your comments or questions posted and published by us during the chat show, you may like to just jump over onto Tim's YouTube channel using the link bit.ly forward slash YouTube dash Tim Kitchen. We'll also be continuing the chat during the Deeper Dive event at the top of the hour, where we'll be crossing to bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe. And remember, the more you contribute, the more interactive these sessions become, and we really do value your comments and thoughts, so please get involved. Erin, are you ready for the Spark Challenge intro? I am. Well, folks. Have a well, folks, I hope you're ready for this week's Spark Challenge. That almost worked. <laughs> <laughs> so nice it worked twice. So the Spark Challenge for this episode is to create a Spark post during this event about some of the key points of interest during the show. We'll be keeping an eye out for your link to your post during the Deeper Dive event. Just pop it in the chat for us. So good luck. And let me show you how to create a spark post i'm just going to share my screen and you can see the advert for today i'm going to bring across another screen and you can see spark i've logged into spark now on a browser of course you could be doing this on your ios or your android device as well but most people tend to be using the browser version you can log in with your school account, most of you if you can't you can always log in with your apple id your google id your facebook id or your Adobe ID, and they're all free IDs that you can create. As long as you're over 13, then you're good to go. If you're under 13, you need to log in via your school account and then talk to your teachers and your IT people about how you manage that at your school. Top left-hand corner, the little plus symbol allows you to get access to all of the Spark products from flyers, Instagram stories, Facebook posts, web pages through Spark page, video through Spark Video, but today's challenge is to create a Spark post. Now you could go to Flyer or you could just jump into the templates and just do a search for any one of the templates. And if you scroll down, you can see some great examples of templates here. I might just quickly grab this beautiful template and then click edit this template. So someone else has already done the design. I'm just gonna rework their design and create the message for this week's challenge, which is all about something that you think you can apply. You might want to create a couple of posts, but whatever you do, just click into the text and change the text, rework the images, and then go to the top right-hand corner where it says share when you're finished with it and make sure you've shared it, you've created a link by sharing it. Don't download it as, a, as an image file or as a, a PNG file or a PDF share it as a link, and once you've published it as a link, put the link into the chat in Blue Jeans. the first one in, then we'll be able to give them a prize potentially, uh, and we'll certainly be showing off your work towards the end of the Deeper Dive event. So that is Spark Post in a bit of a nutshell. I'll just stop sharing there and ask Erin to tell us what's next. Well, well, the 2020 APAC Adobe Education Summit is only one week away and runs from September 29 to October 1. Day one is just for AELs, Adobe Education Leaders. And the guest speaker will actually be our special guest for tonight, Peter Hutton, and his partner at the Future Schools Alliance, Jen Buchanan. Day two, which is Wednesday the 30th of September, is for all educators and it starts at 8.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. The first session will be in the format of an Inject Creativity live chat show like this. Just like this, and Erin and I will be hosting it and we'll be enjoying listening to some of our special guests from America for that morning. It'll be their afternoon, our morning, including Clara Galan, who we met a few weeks ago on our special Sir Ken Robinson tribute. Uh, she's the head of global programs and community programs for for Adobe Education. Ben Forter, who's not only on the Spark team, he is Clara's boss, and he also looks after all the Adobe evangelists around the world. Tanya Avrith, who's the Adobe Education Evangelist for North America. Tacey Trowbridge, who is the global programs manager and was my first manager at Adobe when I first started about seven and a half years ago, and Matt Nemitz, who manages the Adobe Education Exchange. We're looking forward to hearing from them in the first part of that session. 
The event's also going to include a series of short creative catalyst talks from some very talented educators around the globe. And there will be an opportunity to take part in two one and a half hour workshop sessions led by Adobe education leaders and other Adobe experts. If you haven't already, please make sure you register your interest and to get involved using the link or QR code on the slide on the screen. Oh, we've got two QR codes on the slide. Oh, we do. Yeah. Let's have a look at who is coming to this next week's summit. Hi, everyone. It's Eden Carey here from Servite, Perth, Western Australia. Hi, my name is Max Schleser. I'm a senior lecturer at Swinburne University of Technology in Melbourne, Australia. Hi, everyone. It's Adrian Brook here from SAE Creative Institute in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Karen Sutherland here from the University of the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Hi everybody, this is Mark Wojcicki from TAFE New South Wales down here in Australia. Hi, my name is Lorraine Cousins from Rhine Catholic College in Townsville. Hi everyone, Drew Mayhills here from Perth, Western Australia. Hi everyone, my name's Justin DeLacy. I teach at Woodley School on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula in Victoria, Australia. Hi everyone, my name's Henrietta Miller and I work for the Association of Independent Schools in Sydney, New South Wales. Hi everyone, it's Steve O'Neill here from Bellridge Secondary College in Perth, Australia. Hi everyone, it's Erin Rathke here from Tate Queensland in Brisbane, Australia. It's Paul Chafani here from uh, Altham College in Melbourne, Australia. Hi everyone, it's Alison Blackwell here in Perth, Western Australia. Hi everyone. Craig Dow Power from Tate New South Wales, Kingswood New South Wales, Australia. Hi, I'm Juliet Bentley from Mount St Michael's Catholic College, Brisbane, Australia. Hello everyone, my name's Darcy Moore. I'm a Deputy Principal at Dapto High School in New South Wales. Hi everyone, it's Lauren Sayer here from Halebury in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Hi everyone, it's Darren Smith here from Southern River College, Western Australia. Kia ora koutou, ko ema wise to wengawa. I'm Head of Visual Arts at Kitty High School in the beautiful Bav Islands in New Zealand. Hi everyone, it's Mark Christie here from the Northern Territory Department of Education. Hi everyone, Roland Banyas here from Creative Nation Academy in the Philippines. Hi everyone, it's Shaloni Nayak here from Ellenbrook Secondary College in Perth, Western Australia. Hi everyone, it's Ross Johnson here from Tugra Lake Secondary College, Tumbiambi Campus on the New South Wales. G'day everyone, Chris Betcher here from Sydney, Australia. What an amazing group of Adobe education leaders that we can look forward to hearing from and meeting at the summit next week. Erin, introduce our special guests. No worries, Tim. It's my great pleasure to introduce Peter Hutton. He's a former school principal in Victoria and is currently the director of the Future Schools Alliance. As well as him joining us this evening, we've got Kesh Chinia, who's a senior digital solutions teacher at the Southport School on the Gold Coast here in Queensland. Welcome, guys. Hi, Hi Peter. Hi, Hi. Kesh. Great to have you with us on this show. Of course, people would remember Peter from a few weeks ago when we had our Sir Ken Robinson tribute and all the wonderful stories that he shared and the wonderful tribute that he gave us uh, on that incredible tribute. And Peter, I'm still getting emails each week from people who have been watching that since uh, because it's now sitting on the official Adobe for Education YouTube channel. So thanks again for your contribution yeah, at that event. Thanks. Thanks so much, Tim. It was just great to be able to share with everybody in honouring uh, Sir Ken. And uh, Cash, this is your first time with an Inject Creativity event. Welcome. Yes, um, long first time presenter. And we're really looking forward to hearing what you have to say in the Deeper Dive event. First of all, Peter, tell us about what you'll be presenting during the Deeper Dive event. Certainly, Tim. Look, I'm, I'm exploring. I'm really wanting to engage and explore a topic with people today. And it's been something that's been on my mind for a while. And, that, and that's really looking at the function of education, uh, why it was designed. And, you know, obviously it was designed as a production model. And I'm putting forward a contention that the best way to change education is to move that to where we try and maximise fulfilment of all those who are part of that school community. So that's what we'll be exploring tonight. That rings a big bell in terms of a lot of the work that Sir Ken Robinson was has been doing for many years and even thinking back to his uh, his first TED Talk. He, he did three TED Talks, can you believe it? And, uh, and some of them have been transcribed in all sorts of interesting ways. 
the whole concept of the factory model of education and how he really challenged that. So I'm looking forward to, to hearing what you have to say during the Deeper Dive event. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. very much, Tim. Yeah, and Kesh, what are you going to be sharing with us this evening? Um, this evening, I'm going to be um, using a program called Adobe XD, and I'm going to show you how to design with data using Google Sheets and some other plugins that you can find in the app. Yeah. Great. It's going to be great. It's one of our newest applications, and it's incredibly popular. In fact, uh, I was talking to some members of the XD team, and they were saying that XD will be considered as popular as Photoshop in about 10 years' time. Wow. That was a good call to make. That's because, yeah. yeah, Photoshop is is fairly synonymous with, with you know, creativity and, and photography. And so, yeah, that's that's a pretty big thing to say. We. I've, I've just noticed, Aaron, sorry to interrupt you there, that we have some, uh, we have a celebrity with us at the moment. I'm just going to bring up this uh, comment here. Dom, really looking forward to Edu Summit. Now, Dom is the education evangelist for EMEA, which means for, for Europe, basically. He's based out of London. Oh. So it's great to have you with us, Dom. And uh, we, we've got every other e education evangelist speaking at the summit, except for Dom, because it's the middle of the night for Dom when we're doing those. those so uh, I apologise, Dom, that I didn't feature you. Uh, yeah. But thank you for joining us tonight. And if you are able to join us at the summit at any point in time, we'll make sure that uh, we introduce you to everyone there. So thanks again for joining us. Peter, without giving too much away from your presentation at the Deeper Dive event, what do you see that needs to change in our education, in our current education system, to help prepare us and help to prepare the education system for the future? Well, Tim, you've, you've hit the nail on the head because we've gone straight to that focus on preparing students, again, that process of doing too. Uh, and that's, I guess, what I'm wanting to challenge, this whole notion that that students are some kind of raw product in a process and it's beholding on us to uh, to hold the keys to their transformation as opposed to actually empowering young people to to essentially self-author and and, uh, and make those changes. Now, obviously, we need the support of high-quality adults and the broader community, but it's really challenging some of those basic assumptions of why we do school. And that's, that's going to be interesting. And I'd love to get some comments from people who are with us live at the moment through... Well, we've got YouTube and we've got LinkedIn. They, they seem to be working. Twitter doesn't seem to be working, nor does Facebook at the moment. So if you're on Facebook or Twitter and you want to add to this discussion, you might want to jump onto YouTube or LinkedIn to uh, contribute. But it, uh, it does raise some interesting challenges. I know that Sir Ken uh, often would say that every student has incredible creative capabilities and we tend not to encourage them because of our system as such and uh, it'd be lovely to, to rework our system so that we're making the most of the creative capabilities within every one of our students while we've got them. Absolutely. Um, Kesh, what are some ways that the South Port School is looking to um, help their students move into the future? Um, so I wrote down a few things. Um, so the South School and my goal is to enable students to, to use computers creatively with Adobe tools and to think logically with game engines like Unity and create innovative experiences. Um, another goal is also to ease students into senior computing subjects at TSS um, with the new digital solution syllabus. Um, I believe a breakdown of that new system is just creating great ideas with the design and brand data to create something innovative so you're having a real cr creativity focus there with with what you're teaching and uh, that that's that's great to see because creativity is such an important skill and and we know from the research that's come out of the world economic forum that's come out of linkedin that come out of microsoft that creativity or the word creative is now the most searched term on linkedin now think about that the most searched term on LinkedIn for, for people who are looking for future employees, they're searching for creative people. And that doesn't and matter what business it is. 
it also ties it. I noticed that you use the word innovative as well. And um, I think innovation is definitely not just something that people are able to do. It is a, a skill that can be um, cultivated and taught and developed in students. And it's incredibly important as they move into an adult workplaces and adult parts of their life that they they can either you know move along thinking and approaching things the way they've been told to look at them um, but the opportunities that they can have by thinking outside the box a little bit and approaching things from a different angle like it really opens up avenues for them that they wouldn't otherwise have. Peter Adrian who's a, a, a He's a lecturer in Melbourne. Uh, he's an Adobe education leader. He's the head of animation at, um, at a school in Melbourne uh, called SAE, quite a popular school. Adrian uh, says, mm -hmm. education for lifelong learning. What, what are your thoughts when you, when you hear that concept of we really should be educating our students for lifelong learning? Well, we don't really have any other option. They are, you know, learning is not something we can switch on or off, as as we all know. You know, it's it's hardwired into our anatomy. We we were learning before we had schools. Um, you know, one of the interesting stats that I came across recently, and I'll touch on this later, but students are only in class for seventeen percent of their waking hours. Seventeen percent, and they're at school for twenty two percent of their time. So my question is, what's happening in the other eighty three percent? And so, you know, when we talk about lifelong learning, you know, I think Adobe's perfectly placed to support these young people to be actually net creators, you know, so that school's not something that just gets done to you or, you know, you're not this vessel to be filled, but instead, you know, what, what about that concept of creating a whole school where, the, where each student was a net producer, they were a net contributor to their community? You know, and, and that's what really excites me. You know, the old model is dead. It's just, you know, and it's starting to smell a bit, but we've, we've just got to, you know, revamp it essentially. May I, may I point out, Erin, that is a beautiful bookcase behind you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> It is, it is new today. I assembled it this <laughs> afternoon just to make my space a little bit more um, organised uh, for the show this evening. Oh. Thank you so much for noticing. Good example Thank of you. learning. Well done. <laughs> Peter, I had, I had the pleasure of visiting your school uh, on a few occasions when you were school principal at Templestowe College in Melbourne. And um, I think I mentioned this in the uh, Sir Ken tribute too, how when I walked into that school, what I saw was almost an equal status between the students and the teachers. I had this sort of feeling that when I walked in, there were students at reception who were there to greet me. And then to offer me a coffee at a, at a little barista station that was a small business run by a student during the school day as part of their passion projects, wow. as part of their, their curriculum development. It was, a, it was a totally different way of doing schooling. I'm sure you're gonna to touch on that a little bit during the Deeper Dive event. But maybe what are some one or two things that, that a traditional school can do to kind of rework and, and, and rethink education? Well, I guess that this is what's really exciting me about what I'm going to talk about tonight. And it's not fully formed thoughts. That's the other thing. So if you've come to hear it from an expert, this isn't it, okay? It's just an idea that I'd like to float. But... If we, if we actually aimed not at learning, and I know that seems heretical, her, her, heresy, anyway, heretical, um, I, know, I know it sounds like that, not to have schools focus on learning, but what if instead we focused on fulfilment, you know, that deeper sense of satisfaction, like surely that's gonna include having a purpose and learning and, you know, having exploring, um, you know, your curiosities and passions, I think, I think if we actually changed our focus to, to deep fulfilment, not only of students, but to everyone, that'd be a great start because then you'd come up with measures and programs that were gonna return on, the, on that aim. So until we change the aim, we can pretty much play with the mix, but we're gonna end up with the same result and that's fairly horrendous. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna to touch on tonight. And I'd, I'd love to engage with some people both during the presentation and also after if they've got thoughts on how best to do this. Fantastic. And uh, Kesh, what, does that resonate with you? Yeah, um, 
my school is a very traditional school, so I'd love to hear what Pete has to say. Um, maybe I can revamp some of my uh, subject areas and maybe um, the well-being thing to implement some of those really cool barista coffee um, student yeah. ventures. That would be amazing. Mm. <laughs> oh, he might even talk about the the aquarium and the reptile farm and the, and the, the gardens that were created there, the veggie patches, and it was just a, a lovely environment to have young people being fulfilled and following their passions and turning their passions into a job. Just awesome. And there's lifelong skills that are embedded into those sort of things as well. Like, you know, if you're running a, a coffee stall and you're having to manage change, there's numeracy, there's, rash, um, there's uh, you know, quantities, there's remembering the menu, there's, you know, remembering the mechanics of how the machine works, there's machine maintenance, there's consequences if you don't do what you need to do on time. There's just so much really valuable learning that's a great opportunity there that you're not going to read in a chapter in a 10-year-old textbook. I think, just said, yeah. Sorry, Peter, go on. Sorry, I was going to say, I think you're really right with that, Erin. Um, but, but in some ways, the most difficult part of running that barista stall was managing the staff because each one of those young mm. people, uh, they, they bought a, hot, a shift for a whole day. So they had to man it before school, recess, during, the, during classes, uh, mm. through lunch and then after school. They couldn't do all that themselves. So in many ways, those general capabilities that we're now trying to teach explicitly you know are just developed in the course of running something like a coffee cart so simple exactly yeah. and you had students who had a passion for physics when that was kind of discovered in year eight or nine and so you say well why can't they do physics why can't they actually do vce or hsc in new south wales equivalent physics course why do they have to wait until they're in year 11 and 12 to do it why can't they do it when they're in year eight or nine and you kind of really flip things so we're looking forward to hearing some more stories like that during the deeper dive event i just noticed a comment here from a facebook user uh, one of my teachers this week said what i'm noticing from using adobe spark is that kids communicate in a radically different way than we think they should as teachers. And I think, well, there you go. So it's sparking some change there. And, and uh, that's nice to get those sorts of points. Thank you very much, that, that user. And Adrian's made the, the comment here, the obstacle to overcome is the ATAR. And I know that's a bit of a hobby horse for you, Peter. I'm sure you'll probably touch on that. In fact, um, just about every week I'm seeing you on the project saying something about that that comment so you're the go-to person in the media well that's that's only because the government have closed down comment from anyone that works for the department unfortunately but um you know with with the and that that's the reality Aaron. there's 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 not a freedom of speech amongst educators and that's a real shame so because i don't work for any of those bodies i am able to make comment but with with regard to the atar it's not if it'll go it's when it'll go and uh, many of our leading schools are already planning for a post-ATAR pathway. And for those who aren't sure what ATAR is, Adrian's just given us an explanation there. Thank yeah. you, Adrian. Last little comment here from John. I have a Year 9 students about to begin my senior ICT courses in Term 4. Great. It is possible. You can do it. And I was reflecting back when I was teaching how I used to run classes after school on a Tuesday at a girls' school in Melbourne so that I could get boys who wanted to do that subject, it was a multimedia subject, from other schools to come in. It could only happen if we did it after school. And we mm. ended up extending our day till 7.30 at night. Why oh, not? Yeah. The facilities are there. It just seems sad that a school closes down at 3.30, 4 o'clock when they've got such brilliant facilities to use for the community. Why not open it up until the evening as well? There's so many different ideas that we could throw around. Absolutely. Folks, great discussion. That's what the mm. chat out it stimulated some thinking and hopefully the people who are with us now live will be able to join us very soon on the deeper dive event erin and i have just got a couple of announcements to make before we jump into the blue jeans room and we'll see you there at uh, the top of the hour thank you very much kesh and peter for joining us so far we'll see you again soon thank you so let's jump into the special announcements. The global adobe in education team recently launched the adobe creative educators program this is a program for all educators in all curriculum areas. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be in this program. 
Use the QR code or type the link on this slide to find out more about the one hour Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange, which is an entry requirement for the Adobe Creative Educators Program. Uh, do have, I don't think we'll skip the video, yeah? <laughs> And Adobe Max is coming up very soon. The Creativity Conference, usually a very expensive event in Los Angeles. This is, uh, for this year, it's a virtual and it's a free event to be held from October 21 to 23 APAC dates. As it says on the website, make plans to join us for a uniquely immersive and engaging digital experience guaranteed to inspire. There'll be three full days of luminary speakers, celebrity appearances, including Keanu Reeves, musical performances, a global collaborative art project, and 350 plus sessions, all at no cost. Register using the QR code or using the Adobe Max website, max.adobe.com. And take note of the special education streams that are available. If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join this group using facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash A-U-S-A-E-L. It's a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education. Well, that's it, folks, for the chat show. We'll see you in, in the Deeper Dive event very soon. But Rob the Robot wants to say goodbye. Thank you for being part of this week's Inject Creativity Live chat show. We hope you enjoyed it and found it edutaining. It's now time to switch over to Blue Jeans via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for the Deeper Dive show, which is just about to start. See you there.